Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Alfred. Welcome back to Kingdom of Loathing. Um, I started here because I just wanted to grind until I got the encounter, uh, but I got it naturally because we've started and we're here. Anyway, that's why. F -f -f Fantastic. You finally fight your way across the airship and find El Cid, a small speckled man in grease stained green coveralls. Hey there, protagonist. I see you got yourself the flooring material. Now I can get your boats for yous. Apparently he thinks you're the spiky haired loser you'd be the stuffing out of repeatedly while crossing the airship. Whatever works, though. You hand over the spirits and he disappears into his workshop. Several hours and a couple of explosions later. He emerges covered in soot and towing your brand new suborbital conveyance to the kingdom. Fly, man. Super fly. The thing should let you fly into the castle in the distance. You acquire the sock. Suborbital conveyance to the kingdom. Fancy schmancy way of saying it's a small boat for shopping in the lower atmosphere. Which is a fancy way of saying it moves through sky. So now we have access to the castle and clouds in the sky. Um, I'm going to do that. Actually, um, I did spoil myself a little bit on how to handle the Twin Peak. Which means that I'm heading to the Hermitage. And I'm going to buy uh, a 10 leaf clover. And now I'm going to go to Twin Peak. You find yourself in a hallway of the Great Overlook Lodge, wondering how you got to a hallway in the Great Overlook Lodge. And you start wondering why there's a guy in a wolf suit standing next to you, and why he's raising a martini glass and a toast while winking and leaking his lips. You start wondering how you can get the hell out of this creepy place. Right? You're really going to go to the bottom of this lodge business if it kills you. Your eyes are peeled. Your reflexes are on edge. Your nose is a little stuffy, to be honest. This place is cold. So this gives you scent resistance, combat initiative, and item drops from monsters. Which is cool. You're fighting the troll twins. One of the endless dead engines of the headmates. You encounter a set of squat, orange-skinned twins with oversized eyes and enormous cheeks. Hey, do you have any ice cream? One of them asks, and then laughs hysterically, joined by disembodied laughter of an audience you can't see. What? How is that funny at all? You just mispronounce ice cream. Well, if that's not your cup of tea, the other twin says, we'll be 18 years old in just 14 d years, 11 days, 3 hours, and 31 seconds. So hubba hubba. Cut it out, you say, at which point they start trying to bite you in the kneecap. Uh, this is obviously a reference to the Olsen twins. This is just how they said ice cream on Full House. This is a very real thing that is just legitimately puke-inducing. Uh, there were websites counting down until the Olsen twins were 18. Horf. Anyway, the twins each choose a kneecap and commence to bubbling. All right, we got them. Uh, Abu Pink, you're fighting a battling night ghost. A ghost shrouded in all black appears before you, breathing like a scuba diver in an iron lung. Shh, do you support Duke Starkiller in the galaxy battle or some other faction? Ah, he says. I'm kind of undecided. Shh, if you truly believe your pathetic Gary Claybender or the professor can help you. You truly do not know the power of the dim side. <sighs> the ghost responds. Can you take off that helmet, you say? It's distracting. The ghost removes his helmet to reveal an angsty teenage boy. Well, that was anticlimactic, you say. I hate you. I hate you worse than I hate sand, the boy screams and he attacks. This is very apt now that we've encountered uh, Kylo Ren. Bonk. Tries to get his orbiting space station to laser you from a budge, but it's out of firing range. Why didn't they just park the thing in range? Weird. Um. So yeah, now the we can see that the percentages are going down, and I haven't even looked at OLP yet. Uh, I'm gonna go chug a bunch of things that'll give me. Oops, not here. What does this do? That'll do it. Um, excuse me. Oh, that reminds me. I can actually go beep, 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 beep. I can go back to the Hermitage and get another 10-leaf clover. Head on back out. Go to the big mountains. Big large huge? No. Where the hell am I going? I mean, I can just go here. Orchasm. Oh, it's in the orchasm, right? Uh, and go to Abu Peak, the journalist. You manage to find a tombstone that isn't a member of one of those stupid warring factions. According to the epitaph, it's a grave of an archaeologist who made his life's work to study these stupid warring factions 
and write volumes and volumes of stupid analysis about their stupid, endless, stupid war. Book around and find some useful information. So using the 10-leaf clover, that's what I spoiled with this thing, um, I can get more of these easy, which is nice. Uh, I'm going to go rest up. Or actually, I can use the skill, the lick wound skill. Nice. And now I can go and use... Oops. The Abu Clue. All right. You follow the map to the battle site. This battle took place in the ruins of a castle. Pack on the Wall says that this was once the site of pig herpes. <laughs> the school of witchcraft and sorcery. Wizardcraft and sorcery. Excuse me. We can't get sued here. There are claybender sorcerer ghosts flitting about all over the place, throwing spells from their wands. Except one ghost who is sitting in front of an old-fashioned adding machine. The kind with a big lever on the side, you know, and looking glum. Approach the accountant ghost. You look sad, you say. Because everyone's a badass sorcerer and you're stuck doing math? No, the ghost says. Just I'm adding up the numbers and I don't see how the claybender faction can afford to keep fighting. We're hundreds of mana wars in debt. But you guys do magic, right? You asked, why don't you just magic up some more money? We could never do that, the accountant yells. If we could arbitrarily generate money, how would we know who the snobby rich kids and the plucky poor kids are? He probably beats you for a few minutes before he flies away, leaving you panting with terror. You venture deeper into the castle where a ghostly teacher is trying to teach classes during the battle. Don't forget, students, you have po potions next, followed by beginner alchemy, followed by advanced scrying. Say, so, don't the kids take like arithmetic and geography and stuff? No, but they take spell construction and wand lore for beginners, the teacher replies. So you're raising a generation of idiot sorcerers? That seems dangerous. Not as dangerous as not knowing wand lore, dirt bile, says one of the ghostly students, a white-haired evil-looking jerk with two giant goons behind him. For example, if I, o <laughs> if I owned a wand, but then someone disarmed me with their wand and then sold their wand to a goblin who traded it to another wizard with a left-handed crystal ball, what would that make me? A total prat, you say? Which appears to be the wrong answers. Answer is the boy and his friends scare the crap out of you before leaving. I love this. I love that this is a whole segment devoted to dumb fandom stuff. Honestly, the reason that Lord of the Rings probably isn't here is because they couldn't think anything besides the eagles. You walk up one of the weird moving staircases in the castle. Okay, it's just a normal escalator. But as you try to open one of the doors at the top... A uh, group of teachers stop you. Students are not allowed to be permitted on this floor. You look around and see another group of students walking around the walking down the hall a few dozen feet ahead of you. Who are those guys? Huh? You ask? Oh, those students are in the Noble House of Hero Good, one of the ghostly teachers says. The rules don't apply to them. That hardly seems fair. Uh, but the teachers take turns shrieking eldritch spells at you until you agree to play by the rules. Can I go use one of my skills? All right, well, you go down a flight of stairs in the deep dungeons underneath the castle. It's all cold and dark. You see a group of student ghosts huddling around a small fire shivering. What are you guys doing down here, you ask? We live down here because we're evil. One kid says, yeah, another agrees. We're evil and destined to do evil things for the rest of our lives. Whoa. What did you do to get sent down here? Oh, we were picked by the sorting bat when we got down here. It decided us to the house of evil face because it could tell we were evil. It's handy for the school to put all the bad kids in one place before the kids even know we're bad. That really seems fair. Oh, we were down here before a while. After we were down here for a while, we realized how evil we all are. What do the other kids say? They then take turns shrieking, casting terrifying spells at you before they float away shrieking. You flee the scene. All right. So yeah, that gets uh, that gets rid of the hauntedness of Abu Peak. Whereas Twin Peak has to solve a mystery, and I haven't even looked at Oil Peak yet. Um, let's hibernate. Cool. Cool. All right. I can I can I can go to the castle now. Okay, so castle in the clouds in the sky. I know that I'm like splitting myself between these two quests, and believe me, I drive myself crazy as well. Top floor, ground floor, and basement. Start at the top. You have to walk before you can learn to fly. And also, you can't get to the top floor of a building if you can't get to the ground floor. I suppose that makes sense. 
Oh, dear God. You're fighting a furry giant. You are approached by a giant anthropomorphic wolf. You scream in terror as it comes closer until you realize it's a giant dressed in elaborate wolf costume, complete with a Velcro flap over its good God. You scream louder in fury this time, in fur- in furry fury. <laughs> All right. Bonk. Monster defense reduced by five. He shows you some of his more adult-oriented furry fan art. You gouge your eyes, but you can't stop seeing it. Wow, this is better. Using my normal spear is better than the club foot. The the skill, that is. Smack. Oh, we got a wolf mask, huh? Oh, no. <laughs> when you put this mask on, you feel as if you finally discovered the real you. The you that no one else can see. You are a wolf deep inside. Well, actually, you're not. Oh, God. I don't want to wear this, but I will. (laughs) Only because it's stronger than this. I lose a little muscle, but not too, too much. And the power is better. Ugh. Ooh. Maybe not, then. You're finding a fitness giant. This giant has bulging biceps, triceps, lats, quads, glutes. Every part of this giant is all bulgy and veiny. His impressive physique would make him a hit with the ladies if he never did anything but hang out in the gym and pound protein shakes. He squints at you disdainfully, barely able to move his bulging neck to get you in his field of vision. Bro, he says, do you even lift? He scoops you up and squeezes you between his forearm and bicep until you gasp for air. All right, cool. Um, hmm. See, now that my muscle is so much lower, that actually changes my answer. I'm not sure if I should stick with that. Let's lick myself. Whoops, not here. What does this do? Remove an effect, right. What about this? Oh, cool. Well, I got that out of my inventory now. So now I'm just running around uh, doing these quests. Uh, They're fun to read, but I... Not exactly have to waste adventures, but they do require a lot of adventurers. uh, Adventurers to be used. Um, Which is okay. I'll be honest. I don't think I care about the meat car. I'm sure that I'm missing out on some type of loot or some shenanigans, but... uh, Unfortunately, that's the way it falls. Yeah, let's head back. I licked my wounds, right? Yeah. Oh, boy. You're fighting a neckbeard giant. This giant believes the world's computing systems would be much better if they were freed from the tyranny of standardized user interface, stable computing environments, universal compatibility, and user-friendly error messages. His drive to democratize anything means that anyone can run his software for free if they're willing to wade through forums full of contemptuous bile and uncomprehensible advice when something inevitably goes wrong. Or to put it another way, he runs more undocumented drivers than a border town cab service. Youch. (laughs) He greps you in the kidney. You don't know what that means, but you know it hurts. Cool. Now the fitness giant... He asks if you brought tickets to the gun show and then pounds you with a veiny fist when you don't get the joke. Damn. Damn. Oh, well. Um, let's hibernate. Pick myself back up. Let's buff myself. Maybe that'll help. You drink the bottle of Monster Bubble. The tiny bubbles make you feel warm all over, but you have a feeling you're going to be sick until the end of time. You're fighting an alphabet giant. This is a giant who hurls gigantic letters instead of stones. Unless the letters spell out stones, of course, in which case he hurls both letters and stones. He eats it with an A, B, and a C. It's easy as one, two, three. Cool. 
another neckbeard giant. He writes and compiles a new driver to enable him to smash his fist into your face. Orally manual and open sauce. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is a condiment packet that was manufactured with no way to seal it so that anyone who wants to add their own ingredients... Anyone who wants to can add their own ingredients, resulting in the best possible sauce. The last guy apparently decided to need a whole lot of vodka. Oh, man. <laughs> and the orally manual. You read the manual, plus four mysticality stats per fight. Cool. This is a dense technical manual with a surprisingly detailed woodcut of an owl on the cover. Well, I guess I'll do that if I've got to go do a bunch of fights. I guess I can also sell some shenanigans. I don't need or want this anymore. I don't want this anymore. I don't want that or that or that or that or that. I will save that. I don't need this, 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 or this. I know that these don't really give me anything, but I want them out of my inventory, and I am kind of stuck with them. I guess I'll save the broken sword. I'll save my flipper, actually. I don't really need this box. I'll get rid of this and this and this. I don't want to see this anymore. I know I have a whole bunch of crafting items, and I don't really care about that anymore, unfortunately. Um, a while ago, back when I was a small child. Uh, ooh, nice. Look at that. I actually cared a great deal about, about um, another furry giant. Disturbing fanfic. Oh, boy. Um, I actually cared a great deal about... Uh, what does this do? So, oh, it just gave me loot. Cool. I'll get that the hell out of my inventory then. Anyway, 30 damage to sleeve spells. This is 100 pages of animals from a popular cartoon during horrible and disgusting things to each other. I'm watching Deadly Premonition again. That game opens with the main character talking about how Tom and Jerry have a pseudosexual dependent relationship. And that's so iconic. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, uh, I don't really care too, too much about crafting anymore. Uh, when I was a kid, I did a lot. But now I'm just kind of like, you know, I'm here for it. I'm here for the adventure. And granted, I'm also partially here to show off this game and everything that it can offer, but I also am really to just raise awareness for this game, because hell yeah. Um, he delivers a long speech about how you shouldn't judge him because he's an animal deep inside, and you're all in intolerant and dressing up like an animal and easy access furry pants doesn't make you a pervert. You fall asleep halfway through. He fumbles. Another disturbing fanfic. He turns an, a cap into a cape with a silent E and smacks you with it. Oh, I remember. That's a reference to um, uh, Between the Lions. <laughs> nice. That's a classic. That's a classic. All right. We got a heavy D and an original G. This is a D with a X of... This is a letter D of an extraordinary magnitude. The girls, the girls, they love it. And the original G. It's one of the first G's printed by the alphabet giants in the sky back in the day. Nice. It's classic. Fitness giant. He scoops you up. We read that already. Whoa. Okay. You don't mess around with Jim. Lift, bro. The smell of sweat, musk, and testosterone, but mostly sweat, lets your nose know you found the fitness giant's workout room. Dumbbells are stacked in rats on the floor. Racks. And pictures of dumbbells flexing their muscles adorn the wall. There's a giant treadmill, a giant elliptical machine, and a giant blender for making giant protein smoothies. You can also see and smell the giant's gym bag on a bench in the corner. Man, nasty sweaty socks get exp exponentially nastier as their size increases. Wow, this is exactly what I want to because I'm a muscle class. Uh, let's grab a dumbbell. We get a massive dumbbell. You search the rack of dumbbells for the lightest one you can find, but you can pick it up. It still weighs about as much as you do. You find a normal-sized barbell on the floor that you can lift. You take it, try to shake off the feeling you've just st stolen the giant's, <laughs> you've just stolen the giant's long lost tongue piercing. A massive dumbbell. It's a quest item. This is a tiny barbell for a giant. 
which makes it a giant barbell for you. You could probably not bench this even if you were twice the size. In fact, why are you even lugging it around? Another furry giant. Bastards. Kill all furries 2020. Another fitness giant. He drops one of his <laughs> giant dumbbells on your foot. The thing's low IQ doesn't affect its high PQ. Pain quotient. Oh, whoops. I forgot to read that. Excuse me, everyone. Another neckbeard giant. And now I'm going to... Well, I could probably keep going. Oh. All right. All right. He beats you with all 26 letters of the alphabet and then starts in the main up letters, the little dots and extra squiggly lines on them. <laughs> nice. What do these items do, actually, now that I'm looking? It doesn't say that they do anything. Okay. Hmm. I should probably buff myself up a little more, but I'm not exactly sure how I should go about that. I guess I can use more of my skills. Okay. Tongue of the Walrus. Seal Club Frenzy. Nice. Hibernate. Okay, back to the action. Furry fur. Oh Jesus! Is that a is that a crafting item? Furry fur. This is a fur worn by a furry. By which I mean it's the fur worn by a costume from the costume worn by a friggin' pervert. Ah, <laughs> uh, another furry giant. He claws you with his construction paper claws. You get paper cuts all over your groin. Oh. More disturbing fanfic, jeez. Ooh, as you step into the deep shab carpeting, carpeting in the giant neckbeard's room, you keep up a cloud of orange dust that makes you choke. Apparently, they have giant-sized Cheetos, as the neckbeard giant must love them, because everything in here is corded in or greasy orangeness. You're soft beeping and whirring from racks full of gloriously open-source computer equipment and the rattling of a dumb waiter in the corner. I mean, a little hand-powered elevator, not some kind of mentally challenged food server. I'm not sure if that joke has aged well. Um, let's mess with this. You hop onto one of the many keyboards on the desk and jump around, seeing how many obscene words you can spell before you run out of breath. On your last hop, you miss the keyboard and land on a homebrew 3D printed mouse with open source drivers. An arc of electricity jumps between two bare screws and pumps you full of mystical energy. Nice. Ooh, the fast and the furious. Yiff, bro. <laughs> Ew. You walk into a room and your nose crinkles at the overwhelming scent of musty upholstery. You look around and see giant posters on the wall featuring anthropomorphic animals striking curious poses. The closet is full of fursuits with various flaps in them for various purposes you don't want to think about. This must be the furry giant room, and you're glad you don't have an ultraviolet light on you. <laughs> you figure you should get out of here before the skin crawls off your body, but there's a shelf of figurines about your side, and your morbid curiosity compels you to check them out. Oh. You crawl up onto the figurine shelf and check out the giant furry's weird collection. You've never seen such an unsettling assemblage of thong underwear, spherical bosoms, and cat fur in your life. You're relieved to find you don't find a single statue in the macabre collection even remotely attractive. Whew. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh-oh. Peck oil. Actually, this episode's been going for... Well, I've been trying to make shorter episodes for Kingdom of Loathing. Um, and it hasn't been going for too, too long, but I'm going to... I'm going to grind until I find the next uh, encounter. Uh, so I'll see you guys next time. I've been Alfred. Oh. Actually, let's do this one. Uh, let's crawl... Let's check out the dumbwaiter. Whoa. All right, you hook your giant dumbbell. Oh, there you 
you go, onto the counter, waits another dumb waiter. And with a zip and a whoosh, you go up to the second floor. See a chore wheel hanging high up on the wall here. But it's way too far off the ground for you to reach it. It's pretty sweet to, it's be pretty sweet to tell giants what to do, though. Even if you can only tell them to take out the trash and pay their bills. Because that's less giant master and giant mom. All right, look at that. So now we've unlocked the ground floor. Cool. So instead of the three guys down here, we will have the three guys up here. Um, that's an even better place to stop it. Uh, I've been Alfred. This has been Kingdom Loathing. Again, play this game for yourself. I'm literally just chuckling to myself in my room. Like, sitting in my chair. Just, ugh, this game's so good. Um, I've been Alfred. Remember to take care of yourself. Remember to clean your room. Um, this has been Kingdom Loathing. Go play it. I'm always so bad at ending these. Hebe, hebe, blah, blah, blah.